hi babe welcome and welcome back to my channel in this video you're going to see how i make how i made this knotless braid on a client in my very regular average nigerian salon so you will see how it goes down in our corner of the world as you can see the knotless braid looks beautiful so beautiful <laughs> so you're going to see how i do this i used one and a half pack of expression braiding hair uh, expression braiding hair is not exactly your expression braiding hair so i used one and a half pack of our expression braiding hair for our hair I cut it into two equal parts in Nigeria we call that cut two so I cut it once into two equal parts so it's called cut two and it gets up to waist level so for the braid itself I do not use braiding gel all over the scalp and all over the hair as I see people do in some countries I just use it I have just a little at the back of my hand as you can see it's not the quantity you are used to seeing in let's say salons in the US or other braiders so I just use it once in a while to tuck in stray hairs or to cover her hair if that's what I want to do and you can see our atmosphere is usually not except you go to a salon you're not you are not used to or a salon that is new you don't know the stylist or i don't know just when you go to a very very average nigerian salon while making your hair it's usually just fun and gist it's usually fun and gist like okay for my salon for instance when there is light when there is power because it's not every time that we have power in nigeria yes and there is power we might have like a musical video playing or a movie or just some shows or whatever and we just keep ourselves entertained if you happen to meet other young ladies at the salon at the same time it's like gist and gist upon gist people just have this this concept that when ladies get together we just gossip and talk about useless things that's not true we talk about everything if but it depends on the type of clients i have at that time if i have like let's say two working class ladies like ladies are working already it might just revolve around work and colleagues and politics and finance and you know if it's like um let's say family um maybe stay at home moms or young moms it can revolve around funny things children do and just life in general if it's like young single ladies our gist can also be different if it's like teenagers of course the gist is going to be um <laughs> kids friendly if it's like toddlers the gist is kids very kids friendly so it depends but it's usually just like a vibrant happy atmosphere somebody trying a dance step or asking oh do you know how to do this have you seen this video on instagram have you seen this we talk about politics we talk about things happening in the country we talk about fun things that happens at home we talk about people's hair escapades like what has happened with their hairstyles and we talk about our meets and just random like just it's just fun but you can see every time i upload the video it's it's usually just good vibes happy atmosphere you you must see my clients smiling sometimes we stop and laugh and i just take all those parts out of the videos because <laughs> some people are too professional on this youtube but you know it's usually just fun a regular nigerian salon but if you go to like a higher end like a very very higher end type of salon where you have like maybe five client five stylists making your hair four stylists making your hair and the customer is completely on their phone all the period like and one of the reasons why i also like interacting with my customers is that it prevents them for, from sleeping i have this problem once i just touch people's hair they start to sleep so 
at, there was a time I used to like engage them, <laughs> try to force people to talk so that they wouldn't do off, especially if there is no power and like the celebration is not on, the movie is not going on. But from there, I've met like the most amazing, fun women, like the best set of people ever. And I just look forward to them coming in. I just know that everybody coming in is coming with a different vibe, a different kind of happiness that day. It's going to be fun. It's going to be peaceful. It's just going to be nice. There is no negativity around here. There is no gossiping and backbiting. I used to just wonder where people have that concept that when women see themselves, they just get jealous and speak evil about other women. It like I don't get to experience that ever. Like it's very rare, maybe like one in a hundred, like one percent of time you will get a woman that will come and comment negatively about someone else. And usually that vibe is usually just squashed, like no, mm -mm, we don't do that here. Like life is already difficult and we're just trying to, you know, just live the best lives that we can considering what is going on, you know. So it's usually never like that in my salon. I am just trying to tell my story so that you can see how it is from this from this side of the world. Like in my small circle here, this is just something else that is worth noticing in my salon. Because I said like an average Nigerian salon, my salon just represents that like summarized. My salon just represents that. When you get into an average Nigerian salon, Something else that you can see in my video that is not usual that I don't notice in, in other videos is having hair extensions hanging all around the whole salon, like the walls. Sometimes I need to take pictures and I don't have any plain wall where I can just stand and take pictures because I used like nails and whatever to hang up all the hair extensions on the walls. I don't know why we feel as if it forms activity. The client can easily see all the hairs you have, especially when looking at the mirror. They can look at their back and see like everything that you have at once and just make up their mind what they want. But in higher end salons in Nigeria, safe, even just in Nigeria, no, people don't do that. They have like a designated area where they have hair products and you can just go pick it there and sometimes it's stacked up on each other not like displayed to just make everywhere look crazily busy and just sometimes it's like headache it looks too much but that is the way it works if you want to make sales and sell these things like you just have to have them where people can see every single thing and then some other thing i will say again i don't think like an average nigerian salon doesn't take <laughs> you know when i have watched videos of like stylists even stylists who make hairs i don't know if this is only portrayed online because i have never visited like the u.s and when i watch young style like upcoming stylists what's upcoming stylists i make when i watch stylists that make hair even at home they have this sanitary um will i say standard that they keep to where you have to like disinfect your seat, disinfect your working area after each client. I don't know if that's what goes on, let's say, for example, in the US every single time. But in an average Nigerian salon, <laughs> we don't have jobs always surviving every time. <laughs> okay. Like, I don't usually like disinfect my chairs during COVID okay that was understandable that was when we didn't just even lock up and go home that was understandable we have to like disinfect everywhere spray it down and wipe it off at the point it doesn't even water all that stress and, and risk but when i watch stylists in between clients they disinfect the seat disinfect spray down the the work surfaces and all those things i usually don't do that I usually don't do that. The best I do is just to like not repeat using things on on my clients without washing. Maybe like combs and towels and you know those other things, but not to disinfect and sanitize every single item. I don't know if that is what is obtainable usually, but that's just what I see in videos. I'm like, ha, like you people standard that not not. Those things I think are actually necessary, but we don't have like a body that enforces that. Let's put that like that. And many of us didn't go to, we didn't learn how to make hair by going to cosmetology school. No, that's not 
an average Nigerian stylist, that's not how we learn. It's either you take yourself to a salon and just be like an apprentice where you learn or some of us just start braiding from childhood and then it grows into what it is. Everybody's just doing their own different. We don't have like a standard that everybody's taught. When making this hairstyle, you start like this and do like this and everybody's doing that. You go like all over the country. People just have their different techniques. They have their peculiar type of hairstyles. They have like... They are just things that are obtainable. Like in the northern part of Nigeria and also the south, you have those inner weavings, the DD hairstyle. But in the east, we don't do that. We have more of thread hairstyles. Then, then I'm saying then, but now things are changing. But still, like DD hairstyle is not very, very popular in the east as it is in the south and western part of Nigeria. We don't all just go to like a cosmetology school that have a school, like a a scheme of work where yeah, they say cover this and teach this like this everybody blow dries their hair like this everybody braids like this so you just see a lot of different things going on and then some of us are also learning from the internet so that's why you might see some kind of uniformity apart from that it is what it is <laughs> whatever is happening is just usually different and people just learn from practicing and from trying or from playing with dolls and just helping out your mom helping out your friend just like that so our stories are usually different and we don't have like popular you know how like after high school you're going to a cosmetology school and then you graduate you have to have certain things before you open up a salon see most of us that are hairstylists in Nigeria didn't start off to be hairstylists. Like, most people have degrees in, like, science courses. I have, I don't want to even go into my own gist, but we didn't, like, plan and work towards being hairstylists. Maybe things will be different now with the younger generations. They can just make up their minds from, like, high school, I want to be a hairstylist, and then they go into training for that. But that was not, most of us making hair, that was not our stories. We just... Like, uh, we just stumbled into it because of some kind, kind things like that. And also having the passion for it already. This passion wasn't encouraged. Like, when I was growing up, this not, you cannot aspire to be a hairstylist. Are you mad? Like, you have Nigerian parents, you're aspiring to be a hairstylist. Like, nobody's paying your school fees again. Like, just get out of here. <laughs> That's how it is. No. You don't grow up planning to go to cosmetologists, can be a braider and be a makeup artist. <laughs> Those ones you're not really there. You have to be a lawyer, a pharmacist, a doctor, or maybe a good teacher because you get to a prof and then like all those type of jobs. So a stories. I'm just telling you my story. A story is different. This is the hairstyle. Oh, time is up. Thank you for watching. Do you have gist for me? I would like to know. Bye, babe.